Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Odd Bods Go Cards. It's by Playware Hobbies, and it is for two to five players. It takes about a half an hour to play the game, and it's for ages eight and up. In the game Odd Bods Go Cards, you're going to be playing as a race car, one of these little guys here. You'll be utilizing these across a board of four different mats, as well as some side pieces that will affect the game in different ways. There's different options and different terrain pieces that come in the game. So you'll have a bunch of a wide variety of different uh, tracks to choose from and all of the tracks are gonna have different colors They're gonna affiliate the game in some way. It's going to change the way the game is played as you move across certain uh, Colors you're going to be doing certain actions and when you land on certain ones You're going to be doing certain things as well Whether it be moving farther along the track moving backwards or having something nasty happen to you as well as becoming immune to different cards The game is going to have three different kinds of difficulties in which you're going to simply be drawing cards and playing them to move You'll be using those cards to buy different upgrades as well as having special cards in the game that will allow you to do certain things as well as movement such as maybe snooze here play at the start of a racer's turn their turn ends and they draw two cards so on and so forth your objective in the game is to simply move across the track and take it to the finish line if you can make it to the finish line before anybody else you're the winner similar to a game like mario kart all right let's go ahead and show you what it looks like and all its fanciness down below so here we have the game odd bods go cards and not everything that's included, but a good portion of it. In which case, I'm gonna show you all the things we have and then just show you the setup. So first of all, we have the cars, all the little racers, and you have up to seven of them that you can play with. They're all different colors, so they're all gonna have their own uh, different uh, way to tell them apart from one from another. You're also gonna get two different types of dice, whether it be used for this pogo die area, or if you're using it because you land on a space or went across a space on the board. It'll also come with this big box along with the rules and of course the different rules for the different segments. And speaking of segments, it comes with these four here, along with a whole bunch of other ones that you can kind of manipulate the board and make it a longer, more versatile track, a zany track in which it's gonna be going across in different ways and having a start and an end, or simply a basic square track. You're also gonna take your player board area here and set it aside somewhere, or put it in the middle if you're making a square track, put your power-up cards right here after you shuffle the deck, and then place them out. When they place out like this, you're then going to follow the arrows and push them down the track. It's gonna be the way in which you're going to be able to purchase them. And it has a little uh, purchasing symbol here and how much it's going to cost in order to pick these guys up. You bring a lot of purchase these guys provided you're playing with this variant of the game. Every player is also gonna receive three of these movement cards. And the movement cards are pretty simple. They're just gonna say something like, oh, pay two and move two or pay three and move three. And uh, you're also going to be able to have the option to take these special cards and shuffle them into the movement deck, which is going to give you more variety in the game. You also have these Jeff rules cards, which as you pass purple space, you're going to draw one and read what it says. If you have the following conditions met, you don't have to suffer a penalty. But if you don't follow the condition and you can't, you have to go back or some nasty thing will happen to you. And uh, like I said, you're going to place these little corner spaces along the board. There's different types of corner spaces. And in the game, it'll actually come with these stand-up pop-ups. Like this one will come with a pop-up uh, standy uh, track, a car type thing that'll move across. This is like a trash barrel. And this one over here is kind of like a uh, little area with a little ice cream cone. But they're utilized if you land on them, you'll do what they say. Some of them will require a piece of paper that will explain it in more detail if need be. Every player is then going to put their character on the start, they'll have their hand of cards, and then you'll pick somebody to start the game off, going across the track from start all the way to finish. And that is the basic idea for setup as well as everything that comes in the game, odd bods, go cards. Alright, let's come up, I'll tell you about how to play a turn, and then I will show you how to play a turn. In the game Odd Bods Go Cards, you're going to be simply putting your character down the start space after you've made the space and set everything up, and then you're going to have your hand of cards. You're going to play one card from your hand, and it's going to be a movement card, and you'll move across the track that many spaces. You'll also have the opportunity to play a special card, as well as anybody else can play a special card on another player's turn. That special card could help you in movement, or it could do something nasty to another player. Then, if you want, you can look at the, it tells you in, uh, on the rules here exactly what happens, but you can go ahead and buy a power-up card. And power-up cards have a cost down on the board. You can spend your currency by the cards in your hand and that will be allowing you to purchase the cards, which are basically going to be tableau cards that will be added to the front of your area that will either increase your movement speed or do something that will entice you to uh, victory throughout the game. After that, you're going to draw a card and pass your turn. Now, you won't draw a card if you pass a red space or land on a red space on your turn, provided that you have no cards 
in your hand, but otherwise you will. So that is the basic idea. After that, the next player gets to take their turn and continue around the racetrack. As players progress through turns, they'll be buying special cards, or buying buying the unique power-up cards and playing special cards, as well as their movement cards. And the first player to get to the finish is the winner. Now, all the different special cards can be added or removed from the game, depending on the difficulty level, like I said, as well as power-up cards. But for a more uh, in-depth game uh, that I think pretty much any kid can still play, uh, I would include all of the fun stuff. And they all do different things, whether it be uh, uh, share a space with another racer or squeeze past them. That's pretty sweet. Or play with another player draws cards. Draw as many as you would like. Uh, or draw, yeah, draw as many with them as you can. So these kind of things are interesting and unique. But uh, that's the basic idea of the game. From start to finish, play movement, play special cards. All right, let me go ahead and show you down below how it functions and uh, how a couple players' turns are going to be. And then I'll explain all the spaces on the board because they all do different things, whether you pass them or land on them, depending on what they show you. So here we are back to the game. And as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for four players. And I gave every single player three cards. They normally will not be on the board. But due to space, I'm going to go ahead and consolidate here. Uh, this will be for the first set second, third, and fourth player, just so you can easily see, and first, second, third, and fourth. To start the game off, we're going to have this guy go first, and then we'll just have it look like this so it's easier to tell the difference. Now, yellow is going to go ahead and choose one of these cards to play. You can either move one or two spaces, and then, of course, he has their monetary value on the uh, left-hand side here, which is two, so it doesn't really matter. It just depends on which one you want to go ahead and do. So, for instance, maybe I want to go ahead and play this card here. I put it in the discard pile in the movement section, and I can can move two spaces, uh, one and two, which will then allow me to move across here. Now, when you pass certain spaces, there are going to be certain things that can occur, and you're going to go ahead and check the rule book. It'll tell you what exactly all the different spaces do, whether it be the orange lane, which allows you to slide, whether it be the pink lane, which can either uh, trigger you to move left or right, which is the only way you can change lanes in the game, or of course, if you slide, um, as well as allowing you to, uh, I think it's uh, share spaces with another player, whereas normally you will not be able to. The Z space is a place that can protect you and give you immunity from other players playing things on you. You've got blue spaces like this one here, which means you'll roll the pogo die and uh, you will select a player basically and you'll either gain bonus to movement or negative movement. There's a bunch of different things that can happen to this and of course I think there's even something that nothing nothing happens and it tells you right here. Yellow is a place where if you land on it you'll get to draw an extra card on your turn and red is a space that if you land on it or pass it you have to discard a card and you can move a space forward. So in in this case, he's simply going to be immune, and he's moved across here, that's nothing space, and he slid. And after that, he can play any special cards if I added them to the game, which I didn't. This is the basic format, format of the game, so I left these aside. But these can be shuffled in with this movement deck, and I could add even more interesting aspects to the game by either players playing special cards against him or himself playing a card another player. After that, he simply has the option to buy a card here, which is going to tell you three, three, and four, and he can spend cards based on their monetary value to buy these things. This one here says move an extra space every time you move. That's going to be good or bad, depending on which way you move. Discard one card and draw a new one, and uh, change your lane once if you need to. So these are all beneficial cards that will go into your tableau area that will help you throughout the game. They have different types on them and different colors. Then at the end of his turn, he's simply going to draw a card from the movement deck and place it over here. Sometimes they'll have interesting little special things like you can chain up to two or more cards if you give a player a compliment. So there's ways you can kind of interact with players in the game that don't necessarily affect gameplay other than allowing you to do a special ability. The next player is orange and perhaps he wants to go ahead and move three so he can do that and he can select either lane one, two, and then three. He's moved past the red so they have to discard a card if you, uh, and then that will allow him to move an extra space. And of course since he passed a uh, purple, so you have to pass this one purple and this one here, you have to check to see each time if he's able to accomplish the pa the goal, otherwise he moves back. If you don't have more than two cards, follow the arrow. Well, he did it the time before he had to discard, so he'd probably be okay. And then the next time here, it says if you have less than two coins, follow the area. He only has one coin, so he's going to have to follow the area and go down one. And then after that, he's going to end his turn and draw another movement card. Uh, this one over here says you can chain one more card, but you have but racers have 20 seconds to make you smile, and if they fail, you can go ahead and chain. And chaining is you can play more than one movement card on your turn. So that can be pretty cool. Uh, this guy over here, he's got his uh, two, move two movement, and uh, this guy, he says you can chain up two cards if you beat another racer 
uh, pe rock, paper, scissors. So little little bonus games that are for kids, basically. And uh, of course, like I said, you could buy these things, but nobody's wanting to right now because they only have so much money. Maybe if they had something that was worth more. Here's one that's worth three, so you could go ahead and buy something. But he will go ahead and move two. So he'll go one and two, and then he cannot slide with this player because you can't be on the same space as another player unless the space happens to be pink or he has a card that says otherwise. So he could also choose to do this, but he might have to draw one of those. So he'll just go over here. And it's going to determine like how, how filled these spaces are as to whether or not you're going to want to go to which side. This is obviously an easier way to go, but it's going to cost you a card and you can potentially suffer by going backwards, right? And he then can go ahead and spend this card here. He'll go ahead and spend this to get one of these. Every time he moves, he'll get to move an extra one space. So he'll take this card here and it's in his tableau, so he'll put it in front of himself. And then at the end of his turn, he'll draw a card and so on and so forth. You, I'm pretty sure you get the idea of the game moving three spaces, one, two, and three. He'll go ahead and uh, he'll have to discard a card to move past red, which will allow him to move an extra space. He'll check to see if he accomplishes this. If you don't have one chain card, uh, you can you have to follow the area. He doesn't have a chain card, so he will follow the area. He can't move one additional space because he can't pass the other racers. He'll go ahead and draw another card. And the game is going to progress just like that. And players are going to go ahead and race along the board. They'll be able to hit, whenever they hit these areas here, they can switch the lanes if they want to. And uh, they also, when they land on these different areas as well, it'll tell you to do something. This one says to roll the pogo die, so he'll, he'll choose a player, roll this die, minus one, so he might have to move himself back one. Um, or changing lanes. There's different things that these guys do here. And uh, these ones over here says pick a card from the discard pile. That's a pretty useful card there. And this one here says if you discard two cards, this big truck here will come over and hit any racers that are in this area. So for instance, if there's one guy here and one guy about to win, and there's this guy, and he's pretty far behind, he can just discard two cards from his hand, and if he does that, this, this truck will hit everybody and return them here. So it gives the gamer an opportunity to catch up in this game. It's pretty cool. Also, of course, since a character bought one of the cards here, that's going to slide down and this will come up. So you're always going to have these three cards available and all these the arrows will follow. So you're always going to know what's next. So if you want this one here, you might have to buy this one here first or wait for somebody else to buy it in order to get this specific card. So that all plays into the game. And also another thing, is, it's interesting, whenever you pass a space, that's you're going to take part in doing the action. But there are certain spaces that have stars on them, which will only influence you if you land on them. So these red spaces, not landing on them is a good thing. And these yellow spaces, land, uh, landing or passing on them is going to give you the ability to draw a card. So depending on what spaces it is, is going to determine how it's going to be beneficial to you and which lane you're going to want to go in. And it's more likely that the easier lanes to go across are going to be more dangerous, like this board here is a good example, than a space, like than this one over here, which is less dangerous and potentially even good for you because you can draw cards like that. And and like I said, there's a bunch of different track segments that you can go ahead and switch the game around. And the idea of the game is once somebody reaches the end here at the finish line, uh, the, the game is over and that player is the winner. So it's just like a game of Mario Kart or some kind of go-kart style game where you're racing around, where you can also add interesting new aspects to the game, like all of these special cards. Most of them, like I've explained before, pretty simple. I'll talk about a little bit about this uh, above as far as all the special cards and what they do, as well as talk about a little bit more rule books, and then we'll get into the review of the game. So let's get into a couple caveats for Odd Bods Go Cards. And the first one is the tableau management aspect of the game. When you're buying stuff in the store, you can spend a dollar and refresh the bottom spaces to put new cards out there. That's another way as opposed to waiting for somebody to buy something. And also these special cards, which I didn't show a whole lot about, uh, they do different things. Mainly they're going to be used on other players' turns, but they can be used on yours and they'll do, uh, they'll have certain payments and have certain movements as well as special things like play at the start of a racer's turn, their turn ends and they draw two cards. Uh, and of course, if somebody plays that on somebody, you could go ahead and simply play, oh, whenever a player draws a card, uh, I get to draw a card as well. That's a cool little action card that it ties in with that one. Move as the next player moves or move a racer forward two spaces and or to the next lane, which will allow you to change lanes. A hop over a space with uh, this card. Make them slip forward or backward one space and or to the next lane. Move a fellow racer back two spaces. You get the idea. There's just more special actions that can occur throughout this, which can be added to the deck. Uh, the extra uh, different rules, which are called Jeff's rules, say if you don't have two or more chain cards, follow the arrow going backwards. If you don't have more than five coins in your hand, follow the arrow. So all these things are requirements, and if you do not meet them, you're going to suffer the consequence of going backwards and on the track, which can be pretty painful. Uh, and that's the basic idea of the game. Get from start to finish, and if you can do that first, you win the game. So what do I think about it? Well, first of all, the artwork is really cool in this game. It reminds me of, like, Teletubbies, like a kid's, like, children's, like, cartoon you would probably see these days. And, uh, 
all of the artwork is very, very vibrant, very, very colorful. All the characters are cute and little zany, a little funny. You can see the artwork plastered everywhere on all the different rules and whatnot. And it just is fun. It reminds me of going to the slot car racetrack with my dad uh, when I was younger and having the cars move around the track. It has that similar feeling as well as like a game like Mario Gamer to an extent because you are moving on the track. It's a race type game. Uh, and this one you'll be playing action cards to mess your opponents up. And it's for little kids. This is not a deep, heavy strategy game for the average gamer. There are certain things that like losing turns that can be potentially uh, irritating in the cards that I didn't see too many of them. Uh, there are moving backwards and forwards. Some of the different power-up cards are better than others. Like you may hold an extra card in your hand is pretty good, but you may move two spaces every time you move. That's really good. And they all cost the same, oh, three, three, and four. Uh, you may hop over a space when you move, swap spaces with a racer in a space adjoining to yours. You can hold an extra two cards, and uh, it's just random which ones you can buy when they're going to be out on the board. But that's for kids. A uh, little bit of randomness is nice, but the removal of dice in the game is pretty cool. The only time you're going to be using the die is with these luck aspects when you're either rolling both of the die from the multiplier die or whether you're rolling to the different blue spaces. That's pretty interesting and unique. And you're also going to be using movement cards to move around the space. I like that aspect of the game because it gives you more choice and your kids more options as well. Gets them into deeper, more heavily strategized board games like Initial Day and those kind of things. Overall, this is a really fun, cool little kids game. I enjoyed playing this. We played with multiple players and two players is okay because you're just kind of racing along the track. Whoever gets the best power-ups and the best movement cards is probably going to win. However, with more players comes more strategy and comes more complexity because players start blocking the track. You have to figure ways around them using your strategy cards, using your special cards to kind of manipulate the field into doing the best you possibly can for yourself. Add all the fun stuff in, especially if you have little gamers that are used to it. And if not, you start them off slow and then you progressively get more and more interesting by adding new content to the game, as well as utilizing the different tracks and side tracks here that are going to benefit at you as well. Anyway, this game is really fun. I think if you're interested in a family game, if you're interested in getting your kids involved in this type of a game, if you like a racing game that's going to work well, then you're going to enjoy this one. If you don't like the randomization of the cards, the randomization of the special cards, if you don't like not being able to move past your opponents, or the fact that some of the power-up cards are going to be a little stronger than others and it's kind of random as to where they're going to happen, then maybe not this one. But overall, nice components, nice artwork, a fun little kids game, definitely a cool family game to check out. Oddball Go cards. The only thing I was kind of sad is another thing I was kind of sad was the fact that they don't have a player reference for all the different spaces on the board because they do affect you even if you move past them and whatnot. And it's a little tricky to get used to that, especially without a player reference. So do put one in the box, please. Otherwise, pretty cool little game. Odd Bods Go cards. Go ahead and check out the description below. Currently on Kickstarter if it's your thing. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube as well as checking out Odd Bods Go cards. Uh, fun little uh, fun little racing style game which I don't see a whole lot of them especially in the kids category this is probably the first racing game I've seen that's pre pretty decent that is that is specifically made for kids so they did a good job on that also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com uh, tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our friends at bigboygame.com the giveaway geek they got tons of good stuff as well alright got two more giveaways going up right now how game are you and utter nonsense you can go ahead and check it on the site and pick up those games if you're lucky enough that's all I got this time and as always I look forward to racing with you on the go cards next time <laughs>